hello. So on average, it takes a person about seven seconds to form an impression of another person. So by the time I finish this sentence, you will have formed your first impression of me. One of the factors that contributes to these impressions is what we're wearing. I believe that we should feel comfortable in our clothes and that clothes are just clothes and we add the labels ourselves. That's why I created KT Clothing Co., Ireland's first gender-neutral clothing brand. Gender-neutral is defined by being suitable for, applicable to, or common to both male and female genders. I'm a firm believer that gender is a spectrum and we all lie somewhere on it. Um, and there should be clothes to accommodate you wherever you do lie. You shouldn't feel that I like this item of clothing, but I'm a woman and it's listed as men's clothing, so I can't wear it. It seems to me that our ideas of gender, or that, our, that we are evolving, but our ideas of gender are not, to put it like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. In 1990, Teresa de Laurentiis composed the queer theory. The queer theory suggests that if, gen if sexuality and gender weren't predetermined, then people wouldn't act a certain way. There's also reason to believe that what we wear and whether or not we feel comfortable in what we wear contributes to our overall mood, expression, and mental health. There are many reasons why I created KT Clothing Co. In clothes, cognition is one of this, the theory I just spoke about. There are very little options for people who do not conform to predetermined gender norms is another. And one of them is because of the sustainable development goals. Goal number five is gender equality. I think we need to understand the borders uh, between gender that create the inequalities before we can move beyond them. The inequality between men and women, for example, has created, bo has created borders for centuries. And it seems to me that we are moving beyond these borders at a slower rate than desired granted but progress is being made. Recently, we're beginning to witness further changes in our attitude regarding women's role in society. Women are underrepresented in politics, in media, in business, and it's like the higher you go, the less women there are. So it seems to me that we still need feminism in today's society, so why is it such a dirty word? One statistic that really struck me was that only 9% of women identify as feminists. In the words of Christina Ahn, many women thought of themselves as post-feminists, feeling there was no need for feminism since gender equality had already been achieved. But this wasn't really true, and a lot of the fear about calling yourself a feminist came from the negative stereotyping of women as bitter killjoys. To quote Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie again, Feminism is limited by these stereotypes. And it is these stereotypes that are damaging to the overall movement. It does strike me that only 9% of women identify as feminists. Because, but it doesn't shock me, because to identify as a feminist, you're by default also identifying as aggressive, a man-hater, which is simply not true. I think that we need feminism now more than ever. The feminism movement is more diverse than ever and is being fought by so many people in so many different ways. It is because of this I feel so lucky to be involved with Shona.ie, an organisation founded by Tammy Darcy that works to support young Irish women and celebrate women from all over the world. It is these type of projects that will change the way we view feminism. Now, I do feel that it is very important to recognise the relationship between gender neutrality and the LGBT community. I'm fairly certain that most of us will, in the room tonight will know what LGBT stands for, but it seems to me that we don't recognise the plus at the end of that. So why is it that we stop there? Othering is something I've learned about since starting KT Clothing Co. Othering is categorised as treating someone alien to oneself because of a difference. As far as I'm concerned, you can't invalidate someone's gender and or sexual orientation and then spec validation for your own. Being gender neutral or non-binary or gender fluid and many others are often scrutinised and discriminated against. And I feel that a large portion of that is down to othering. That's another reason why KT Clothing Co. began. 
uh, and I am encouraging to people to challenge the stigma around clothes. Clothes are one of the first things we notice about a person. However, there's a significant difference between noticing something and judging it. Now, I'm not saying that you have to like absolutely everything that someone would wear. That's unrealistic. But I'm saying that you should respect a person wearing gender-neutral clothing the same way you would respect a woman wearing traditionally women's clothing and a man wearing traditionally men's clothing. Someone I once met told me the way they describe gender neutrality to the people they meet. So now I want you for a second to visualize that you are the only man or woman in a multitude of the opposite sex. Imagine what that would be like. Seven days a week, 365 days a year, you are bombarded with what is regarded as normal. Every day, you're on your own in an ocean of people of the opposite gender, and this opposite gender dominates everything from films to books. Now, for a moment, I want you to think about what your life would be like. Would you feel happy? Sad? Oppressed? Discriminated against, even? This is what life can be like every day for someone who identifies as gender neutral, non-binary, gender fluid, or many others. Excluding some rare occasions, they're unable to identify with the mainstream, which is cisgender and heteronormative. Through my work in the last couple of years, I've been able to gain so much powerful, valuable knowledge from so many people in the LGBT plus community. I feel extremely privileged to be standing in front of you this evening to be in a position to spread some of this powerful, valuable knowledge. To understand people who, who encounter gender identity issues, we must first understand the difference between gender and sex. Sex is the biological end of things. Sex is assigned at birth and is determined uh, by the reproductive organs. Gender is your interpersonal perception of yourself. Keeping this in mind, a transgender person is someone whose sense of personal identity does not correspond with their assigned sex at birth. Cis or cisgender is a term used to denote a person whose sense of personal identity does correspond with their assigned sex of birth. Now, I believe that both of these words should be used as adjectives. Being trans or gay or genderqueer or, or gender fluid or bisexual or aromantic is just a figment of someone's personality. I really believe that further acknowledgement of this fact will lead to better overall acceptance and further education that will combat the horrific statistics we currently have in this country for the LGBT plus community. Statistics of 2016 highlight that 70% of LGBT teens aged 14 to 18 had seriously thought of ending their own lives. The report commissioned by Glenn and belonged to and funded by the HSE also found that school is a difficult, a difficult place for young LGBT plus teens, with only one in five feeling completely, that they completely belong in their school and less than half feeling that they've received a uh, proper affirmation for their identity. I am glad to say that a more recent consultation by the Department of Children and Youth Affairs shows that young LGBT plus people who took part in the consultation believe that Ireland is a more, becoming a more positive environment, with one stating, a more progressive environment in Ireland is making it easier to come out than in past years. So when I was writing for this talk, I really struggled with an ending, partly because I believe there's so much more that needs to be said. So I am going to leave you with this. What do you think the future would look like if we didn't impose needless gender roles on our young people? What can we achieve if we live life as our true selves? Imagine a world where diversity and differences are celebrated and not discriminated against. Where people can really flourish is that not what we should be striving for? Thank you.